plans with yourself are still plans. They are doing you a favor by walking away. And that will speak volumes in and of itself. Everything that happens in the darkness comes to light at some point, I promise you. <laughs> To the walk podcast if you're new here my name is sam i post all things faith lifestyle an occasional travel vlog every now and then this channel is essentially a video diary of my life and we are here with episode 25 i'm pretty sure which is crazy that's a quarter of a hundred that's i was gonna keep trying to do math but <laughs> I can't do that. Um, but 25 episodes is a lot. It's a lot. And it happened really fast. And I'm really excited to be here. And it kind of worked out well that this is like my birthday episode for episode 25. I didn't even plan that. It's just look at the way things work. Um, so we're going to do a little 28 things I learned in 28 years. And it's going to be just a chit chat you know, sharing some knowledge that I have acquired over the last couple years. Um, if you see a little paw on my on my lap here, Luna is with me. She'll say hi in a moment. She's playing with my dress. But I wanted to remind you guys that all of my links are down below. This podcast is also available on Spotify. And I love when you guys tell me that you actually listen over there. You listen to it on your walks or when you're working out or when you're driving, which I do with some of my favorite podcasts. So it's really cool to know that you guys do that with this podcast as well. Um, what else can I tell you? I have my Instagram down below. I have my TikTok, my TikTok for this podcast, as well as my personal TikTok down below. I have been very active over there lately. So if you'd like more content from me, all of those things will be down below. And all right, before she gets any more antsy, Luna is here to say hi to you guys. A little growth update for you. The last time she was on the podcast, she was a little pipsqueak. And now she is about to be seven months old this week on the 18th on Thursday. I'm filming this the week before you guys are going to see it, I'm pretty sure. But on July 18th, she will be seven months old. Crazy that she is not even fully grown yet. She was at my mom's yesterday with me and she was chasing flies and she was killing spiders and doing all the things. And so she had herself a field day yesterday. And so she has been super sleepy today and just out of it. She's like recovering from her, from her day on the road uh, yesterday, but it was a really fun day. And I've had so many um, fun moments with my family and friends over the last couple days just celebrating my birthday. It's weird to think that I am about to be 28. I'm filming this the day before my birthday. You'll probably see it next week, but I did have a moment, I'm not gonna lie, where I was like, whoa, 28. Like 28 feels a lot different than 27 for some reason in my brain. Um, and I don't know why that is. Um, and I'm not one of those people that is afraid of getting older. I'm very excited to get older. I know, you know, I'm looking forward to all the things that are going to come in my life. You know, family, watching my friends have families. Like, you know, I'm excited for all that. So I'm not, I've never been the type of person where I'm like afraid to get older. Like that I want to lie about my age. I mean, I'm only 28. That's not that old. It's not old, but you know what I mean? Like I just, I'm not that kind of person. But I did have a moment the other day where I was like, I only have two more years of my 20s left. And it's when you're in your 20s, especially when you're in your early to mid 20s, you kind of feel like you're going to be that way forever. Like you kind of feel like you're going to be that age forever. And you don't ever like 40 and 35 like seems so far off. But then time starts to fly and all of a sudden you're like, wait, I have two years of my 20s left. And like once they're over... Like, I'm never going to get them back. Like, that's it. They're done, you know? And I was telling my stepdad that yesterday, and he was like, no, don't think about it that way. He was like, you're going to ruin it for yourself. And I was like, no, no, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying. I am enjoying my life. I'm going here. I'm doing there. I've done so much traveling. I've, you know, put in perspective, my dad, I love him dearly. He hasn't explored our country too much. And I've seen more of the U.S. than he has in his 
fifties in his late fifties, you know? So I'm, I'm thankful I'm enjoying it, but, um, it's just wild to think that like, wow, two years left. Um, but I am like determined to make them the two best years ever and like go into thirties just like so strong, but we're not, we're not thinking about 30 yet. I'm just saying that I definitely did have a moment where I was like, whoa, like when did I get close to 30? Like I'm like a, like I've been an adult for a couple of years, but now I'm like an adult adult. It's like wild anyway, but getting older is fun. Every year really does. I keep saying it like every year does get so much sweeter for me. I learn so much more every year. I fall more in love with like who I am every year. I, you know, am learning to, I guess, like heal parts of myself, you know, from many, many years ago where you don't like everybody has a little bit of childhood trauma and a little bit of not that I had a bad childhood by any means, but everybody has things that they can heal from and, and, you know, work through and work on. And I do that every year, especially in the last two, three years. And so, um, getting older has been great, but 28 definitely feels different than 27, but that's okay. So I have done this sort of video concept, um, in the past, I've done it for a couple of years now, um, but I usually do them in ASMR form on my ASMR channel. But this year, because we have a podcast, I wanted to do it on this channel instead. So I always do like whatever age I'm turning, turning 25 things I've learned in 25 years, 26, et cetera, et cetera. So today we are going to go through 28 things I have learned in 28 years. If you follow me on my personal TikTok, you have probably seen this already because I made a much more condensed two and a half minute version of this over on TikTok that I posted last week. So you may have seen that already, but this will be more, I'm like swatting away cat hair. If you can see me, there's like, I have to brush her. There's a lot of hair right now, but, um, anyway, um, yeah, I am going to be more, um, more wordy obviously here. It's a podcast. So we're going to ramble about each, each point. And it's probably going to take a little bit. Um, I won't keep you here for hours and hours, but um, we're definitely going to chat. But before we get into the list, I have to show you guys something. So my best friend has an Etsy shop and she makes clothes and stuff and her products are really, really good. So part of my birthday present from her, and this would have been more than enough her just getting me this. She made me this shirt. Can you see? It's like a little crop top and it has our podcast logo on it and it literally looks like merch. It's not, I don't have merch. She made it just for me. She was like, you know, I I wanted you to have something with your brand on it. And first of all, I just like, she is one of the most thoughtful people to exist. Um, but now I have a piece of clothing with my logo on it or my podcast on it, which is so wild to think that once this like series like it didn't even have a name it wasn't even really a podcast yet and now it's like it's physical like it exists on a piece of clothing no it's just really cool i know it sounds like stupid and cheesy but i pulled it out of the bag and i like literally gasped when i saw it and just to see it like on something physical i don't know it was just really special to me because of the way this podcast started it started from a place of pain and um, just like just when I was lost, you know, and, and I just had so many thoughts going through my mind that I just needed to let them out. And that's how this podcast started. And now it's at a place where it's changing. It's changing people. It's changing the way they think. I got a message last night from a, someone who you know, it was like, thank you for inspiring me to like start a relationship with God. Like I just bought my first Bible. I I just started praying. Like I get messages like that. And it's just, it's just so wild how amazing things can come from such low places. Anyway, I'm rambling too much, but I just wanted to like give her a shout out and like show you guys this. Um, I don't have merch. I've never had merch. I always said when my main channel got to 200,000 subscribers, I would think about doing merch. And right now we're at 188,000. So like we're getting there. Um, I think we're a far ways away from ever having podcast merch just because I personally don't think enough people uh, like listen to it regularly to have merch. Um, But who knows? Maybe one day. 
you guys let me know what you think about that. I don't think we're there yet, but who knows one day, maybe. But I just thought that was so special. So Marissa, I don't know if you still listen to these episodes, but if you are listening, I love you so much. And that was one of the most special gifts I've ever gotten. And I will be wearing it out in public. And I want people to ask me, oh, what's the Walk podcast? We'll see. If that ever happens, I'll let you guys know. Okay. So let me pull out my notes. And we're just going to go through it. A lot of these are very, like, self-explanatory. But we are going to talk about them. And we're just going to chill. I got my feet up here. We're just going to get comfortable. And we're just going to go for it. These are in no particular order. They're kind of just in the way that they came to my mind. So, number one, the first thing I learned, going to therapy is not a sign of weakness. It shows strength and emotional awareness. Um, If you're around my age, I feel like I grew up thinking, you know, oh, that person goes to therapy. There must be something wrong with them. Or something really bad must have happened to them. Or X, Y, Z. And that's not actually the case. I mean, I went to therapy, yes, because I was in a place of like sadness, but I have learned that like, there's not, nothing is wrong with you if you go to therapy. You know, like I said, I I think it shows strength. It shows strength that you want to get better, that you are emotionally available to talk about your feelings. Um, And I think everyone, I always have said this, I think the world would be such a better place if every single person in the world got at least a month of therapy like I feel like it should be free like I don't know we need to figure it out because everybody has things from their their childhood that they can unpack everybody has everybody just needs it everybody needs to talk and you need to talk to someone who is unbiased who doesn't know you personally in your life you know you want a completely unbiased professional opinion and I think it just shows a lot of strength from someone who's like yeah I want to go to therapy because I want to get better so Just because you go to therapy does not mean that there's anything wrong with you at all. Does not mean you're weak. The second one. I have said this on this podcast before. I'm going to say it again. If you have to post something on social media to remind the person that you like that you exist, they're not the one for you. In simpler terms, if you have to remind them that you exist, they're not the one for you. Okay? Okay. You have to wait for somebody who doesn't need to be reminded, who doesn't need to be convinced, who does not have to see a thirst trap from you, whether you are a male or a female. It doesn't matter because guys do it too. I know they do. I have guy friends. It doesn't matter. If you have to prove to them like, hey, I'm attractive and I'm cool and you should want to date me. If they're not doing that on their own, it's not the person for you. Don't sell yourself short this is coming from someone who did that for years when I was younger much younger when I was in like college in the first couple years after college let me tell you take it from someone who did that and then got the person and dated them for a couple years it's not worth it wait for somebody who's gonna want you on their own I cannot stress it enough that one is more for like younger people but I know people my age that still do it too And it's tempting. I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel the temptation sometimes to do it if I think that somebody's cute or whatever. But saying hi to them goes so much farther than posting something and then hoping they see it. And then sometimes you feel disappointment when they see it and then they don't comment or they don't like it or they don't nothing. You know what I mean? Don't do it to yourself. If they have to be convinced, they're not for you. Next one. The first time, this one's self-explanatory, the first time the person that you are dating intentionally and disrespectfully keeps something from you, you are gone. I'm not talking like little white, like, oh, they were keeping a surprise from you. That's what I'm talking about. There's something that happened that they knew would make you angry or that they knew was wrong that they did and they purposely kept it from you. You are gone. Not the second time. Not the third time. The first time. Gone. If you're like married, that's a little, I'm talking about like dating, like a, like a situationship or a boyfriend, girlfriend situation, whatever it is, because that means that they did not respect you enough to tell you the truth. They did something without caring about the way it would make you feel and they decided to keep it from you. 
that is not the person for you. Get someone who actually respects you and your feelings, period. And don't fall for the excuse of, oh, I kept it from you because I knew it was going to make you upset and I didn't want to make you upset. No. Nope. Nope. Wait for somebody that respects you, period. Next one. This one's self-explanatory. And this is something that I am trying to practice what I preach. (laughs) And that is you don't need to buy a new outfit for every occasion. I, I, as someone who takes pictures and posts them on social media, if I go to a wedding in this gown and then I go to another wedding a couple months later, I'm not going to wear that same gown because then I don't want to post pictures in this, you know what I mean? You don't want to post pictures in the same outfit. Like I get that. And that's a little different, but like sometimes every little occasion, like we're going out for someone's birthday. Oh, I need to buy something. No, you don't. You can, but you don't have to. Don't have to. You have clothes. Just take a different shirt with different pants and match them together. And just, huh. I'm still practicing that one. But I, I have learned that. I just need to practice it more. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> the next one. This kind of goes hand in hand with the therapy one. If you don't heal it, you will bleed it. And you will bleed it on everyone around you. For example, you have trauma from a parent maybe or trauma from a relationship if you don't heal it the next time you get into a relationship or the next time you deal with someone that unhealed trauma you're gonna put it on to them even if they did nothing to deserve it because it hasn't healed in you yet so if you don't heal it you'll bleed it and the people around you don't deserve to be bled on especially if they didn't do anything. So, heal it. Go to therapy. Everyone go to therapy. I did it for nine months. Sometimes I think I could have done it longer. Sometimes I'm like, you know, maybe one day I'll go back. Who knows? Right now I don't feel like I need to, but who knows? You know, I just think therapy is a good thing. Um, the next one is the red flags that you ignore at the beginning of a relationship are almost always the reason why at the end of the relationship it doesn't work out. Or at the end of the relationship, when it's over, you look back and you're like, oh, now I see why it didn't work. Almost always, it will be somehow related to the things that you ignored in the beginning. And it's so important to have people in your life that you are confiding in along the way to point out those flags to you. Like one of my best friends was just seeing some guy and there were some red flags in the beginning. And she straight up came to me and she said, can you please hold me accountable? Like, can you remind me of these things if I get in too deep and I'm blind to them? Everybody needs that because when you're, when you're in it, it's you, it's your business, it's you and this person. It's so easy to become blind. Take it from someone who's done it. It's so easy to become blind because you're, you have those rose colored lenses where that person could do no wrong in your eyes. People from the outside will be able to see it different than you. So when you start seeing things from the beginning, they're like, oh, that might not work. Oh, that might not work. They're going to come back. They're going to come back sooner or later. So just don't ignore them, okay? They're red flags for a reason. So next, I really like this. This is actually a quote that I read a couple weeks ago maybe. And it really stuck with me. And it says, be yourself so that the people that are looking for you can find you. I think that's so beautiful. Just be yourself so that the right people will find you. The right people that will love you for you. The right people who will have things in common with you. Who will have the same interests and the same passions. Not to say that they're going to be the exact same person as you. But if, if they're looking for somebody like you. It's going to be a perfect match, whether it's a friendship or a romantic relationship. Those are your people. So make it easier for them to find you. Don't put on a show for people because then you're going to attract people that aren't as good of a fit as somebody else would be. So be yourself so the right people can find you. That just really stuck with me and I really like it. Okay, the next one is something I also have to... I've gotten a lot better with it, but it's something that I'm like reminding myself and it's the longer you entertain something that is not for you, the longer you postpone getting what God actually has for you. 
so for me this comes this could be it could relate to anything but for me it reminds me of like a romantic relationship um where like going back to the guy I spoke about him in the last episode the guy that I was talking to that like I knew they were things that were just not going to work compatibility wise there were some things that I did not like some red flags that I almost ignored but thank god didn't um but if I had continued like talking to him and dating him and whatever I would have been stuck in that situation and it would have been harder for the right person maybe to find me let's just say you know that kind of situation or if you're entertaining something that you know is not for you don't entertain it don't waste your time don't waste the other person's time just let them move on so that you can find your best as well um god's like god's waiting to like give us the things that we're asking for he's just waiting for us to be ready to receive it which we'll get into that in a little bit the next one is self-explanatory and it's one that I'm really trying to remind myself is that you're still pretty without makeup. One of the, th- the downfalls about being on, on camera for so many years is that I always did my makeup for every single video and so me with makeup became me. Whereas a lot of people I know like don't really wear makeup every day and they only put it on for special occasions so their beautiful bare face is them. I feel like my bare face is not nearly as nice looking as it is on camera every day. So when I go to work, I put on a full face of makeup. Not like dramatic eyeshadow and lipstick and all the things, but I put on foundation, I put on powder, I put on contour, I put on blush like I, every day, which is not bad. I, I enjoy it and it makes me feel confident and it makes me feel yeah, just confident and like good about myself. And that's not bad. I'm not saying I'm going to stop doing that, but I don't want my mentality to be like, I look bad without makeup. And so I've been forcing myself to like, when I go to the store and I go out, like even when I was younger, I used to put makeup on for that. And now I've been going like bare face and I'm getting more comfortable with it, which is nice. Um, but I definitely like, I'm just trying to teach myself like just because you don't have makeup on does not mean that you look ugly right now funny story about this and please don't get the bad a bad idea of my dad my dad is the sweetest I love him so much um but I had bumped into him at the supermarket the other day it was a Saturday and it was like 1 p.m and uh I was like oh hey dad I like pulled up next to him in my car like hey dad and he was like hey did you just wake up (laughs) and I was like no does it look like I did And then I said, you know, I'm not wearing any makeup right now. And he said, oh, yeah, you look puffy. (laughs) It's like, thanks. You always know how to humble me. But but it's also partially because even my family, everyone is used to seeing me in makeup all the time. So when I don't have makeup on, I just, I look a little different. I don't look that different. Personally, I don't think I look that different. But you know what I mean? So it's just something that I'm trying to become more comfortable with the next one this one I'm not even gonna really talk about much it's self-explanatory if somebody lets you go and makes you feel like you are not worth fighting for they are doing you a favor by walking away period there's not much else to say about that one the next one reading your bible is one thing reading your bible outside is such a game changer I don't know why there is something about reading your Bible out in the world in God's creation that is just different. I don't know. It just hits different. I can't explain it. I have gone outside. I have a Starbucks by me that has a really nice outdoor patio with chairs and umbrellas and stuff. I have gone there and gotten a tea and read. I have read on the beach. That was sick. That was so cool. The wind makes it a little harder (laughs) with the pages, but I don't know. It's just something different about reading your Bible outside. And I cannot wait for the day, I'm speaking it into existence, I cannot wait for the day where I have a house with a backyard and I can go out and read my devotional outside. And my husband will also like read outside if, you know, if he has a devotional and just like, I just like can't, I can't wait for that. I cannot wait for that. So putting it into existence speaking it out um so yeah reading your bible outside game changer 
Um, next one. When you're on a first date, worry less about what the person thinks of you and whether they like you and think more about whether you even like them, whether they're going to fit into your life. For such a long time, and now being older, I know the reasons for this and I know where this came from. We're not going to get into it, but for such a long time, it was always like if there was a boy I thought was cute, it was always about, oh, I hope he likes me. I hope he finds me worthy of being liked or asked out on a date or whatever. And I never stopped to think, do I even like them? Like, just because they're cute doesn't mean that they're a contender. It does not mean that they should be in your life long term. And I never really stopped to like, like, I, I don't have to fight to be worthy. I need to make sure that I even like you and that I want you in my life. So now when I go on dates, I am open to that where that's like that's the forefront of my mind where I'm like okay like this person's cool but like would we work long term or like do I like that about him do I even like the way our chemistry feels and now being older I'm comfortable being vocal with someone and being like hey I just didn't feel the connection that I'm looking for and that's okay I think that's the point of dating sometimes it sucks sometimes you feel mean or if you're on the receiving end of that it can definitely sting but um, it's just so important to think about it that way. And it also puts, it takes the pressure off where you're not going in for a job interview. You're just seeing whether you are compatible with this person and that's, and that's okay. You know? So that one is important for men and women, all ages alike. Okay. Well, if you're of proper dating age. <laughs> okay. Next one is nine times out of 10, silence is the best revenge. It just is what it is. I know it's so tempting to want to call somebody up or send a text and, be, and, and get the last word or, you know, be petty and like rub it in someone's face. It's not worth it. Your silence and your growth, your silence and your... Um, betterment of yourself is what is important it just it just is what it is pick yourself up dust yourself off move forward better yourself become a boss and that will speak volumes in and of itself just be an unbothered king or queen you know level up in life trust me that's all the revenge you need. There is also a Bible verse that I can't remember right now. I have made a TikTok about it. I can't remember. It's in, you can find it in the, mm, I don't remember where it is. I don't remember where it is, but I'm not going to like guess and then be wrong. But there's a Bible verse that says vengeance is the Lord's. So you don't have to go and get revenge. God will take care of it for you. I'm not here to preach to you, but that's just a little, there is a scripture that says Vengeance is the Lord's. Let him have it. He will take care of it for you. You just go on and live your best life, which is awesome. Um, okay, the next one is you have to nurture your friendships just like you would a romantic relationship, especially new friendships. You have to pour into these relationships. They're relationships. A relationship is when two people know each other and, you know, not necessarily do life together, but a relationship is... is between two people it doesn't have to just be a romantic relationship so your friendships need that nurturing I am learning that where with my new friends I've made at church especially making friends in your in your adult years is hard and you need to take the time to hey let's go hang out let's go have lunch let's have conversations let each other in to what's going on in your life you need to nurture it. Just like if you're in a situation ship and you're getting ready to like become boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, you're in an actual relationship, you're going to hang out a lot. You're going to go out to eat a lot. You're going to talk on the phone a lot. You're going to not saying you need to talk to your friend the way you would a romantic partner, but you have to nurture. And I need to be better at that. Like I have, I, I do hang out with my church friends, but like sometimes I'm like, I need to make more of an effort. I need to, you know, that girl that I really like, like ask her out to lunch, you know, something like that. And it doesn't have to be weird. It's not like you're asking them out on an actual date. You're just like, hey, let's go get lunch and like 
hang out or like come over meet my cat like you know you have to nurture those those relationships as well and not just new ones your old ones too it's it's a little harder with old friends especially like all my friends from high school and in college everyone's kind of doing their own thing so it's a little harder but you still have to nurture them you still need to check in with each other i have one friend who he's been my friend for like 10 years now and he'll call me or check in with me he'll text me randomly every couple weeks like hey what's going on like i need to be better at that he does it to me all the time he's like hey what's going on or he'll call he'll be like just want to say what's up what's going on that's so important and i really want to get better at that so that's something i'm trying to work on but friendships need to be nurtured as well The next one says, pay less attention to fashion trends and pay more attention to the clothes that actually make you feel confident and beautiful or just feel, feel good when you're walking around. I like to like look at fashion trends. Like I would say, be aware of them if you want to, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I like to be aware of fashion trends and then I like to put my own kind of spin on it. I have a very, I wouldn't say it's a distinct style, but it's a very clean kind of like staple pieces but it just like works for me. So I don't always follow the trend. Sometimes I see a trend I don't like. And if I know that it's not going to look good on me, I will not follow it. Like y'all can do that. Do you. If that if you like it, it makes you feel good. There are a lot of trends that look great on other people that wouldn't look good on me. You know, and that's my choice, right? So um, I'm aware of fashion trends, but it's not like Bible that I have to follow them. I kind of just wear what I feel good in and what I like. So the next one says, this is a good one. If there's something that you want to do and no one is available to do it with you, just go do it by yourself because plans with yourself are still plans. I, for the first time I vlogged it on this channel, it's up on this channel. I took myself on my first solo date day once. This was back in... I think it was in January, I want to say. It was right before I got Luna. And I took myself out to dinner for the first time. I ate in an actual restaurant by myself. Got a glass of wine, a meal, and an appetizer. There was a movie that I wanted to see. No one could really go with me. So I went and I took myself to see it. It was the Willy Wonka movie. And I had a nice little date day. I went, I bought myself flowers. I went, I I like took some pictures. I made a TikTok. I went shopping. And I had plans. I had plans with myself. So if there's something that you want to do and either no one wants to do it or no one is around to do it, I think you should still do it. I think it's scary at first, but it's actually really peaceful doing things by yourself. And I think everyone needs to be okay with being alone and be comfortable being alone. Um, And it's, again, like I said, it starts off really hard, but then you're like, oh, this is actually kind of nice. Like it's really peaceful. Um, obviously make sure you're safe if you're going like doing things alone, but I think everyone should like take themselves out just once on like a solo date day. It's just, it's really cool. And I, when I went to the restaurant, I was like, geez, what do I like do with myself? I don't want to just be on my phone. So I brought my journal and I like journaled while I ate and while I was waiting for the food and stuff. And I really tried to be present and just not be on my phone. And it was really, really cool. And now I have that journal entry forever. You know, so it's really cool. Um, The next one says, if you feel the need to lie and cover up things that your partner is doing and you're like lying to your friends and your family about it and you're trying to cover it up, that's probably not the person for you. I have been there in multiple relationships that I have been in where my partner at the time was doing some things that probably shouldn't have been doing and I didn't tell my friends because I knew that they would tell me to leave them. I didn't tell my family because for the same reason, and also I didn't want my family to judge them, you know, because I was so in love with them, right, that I didn't want my family to also fall out of love with them and tell me to break up with them. Um, I have kept secrets about my exes to, like, their parents, and then it just becomes messy, and if, if, there, if there are feelings of like, I need to cover this up. No one can know about this. You're living in secret. And it's just everything that happens in the darkness comes to light at some point. I promise you, I promise you it will. Don't make yourself live like that. 
If you're covering things up, even if they're little white lies, that means that you're, you can't be fully open about your relationship. It's not the relationship for you. I promise you, I promise you. So take a real deep look at your relationship and what's going on and assess it that way. I promise you. This is like my big sister advice. Uh, I mean it. Okay, the next one says, God will not give you what you're praying for unless you're ready to have it and unless you're ready to keep it. And that makes the wor- the waiting worth it. So if you're praying for a husband, praying for a wife, but you're not at the point where you're like ready to keep it and like steward that relationship well, God's not going to give it to you. Um, and that makes it worth it because why would you want something that you're not ready for? I've talked about it many times where waiting for the things that you're you're praying for and waiting for, it feels like it sucks. Like waiting is awful. <laughs> it's awful. But when you think about it like that, it's like, you know what? <clears throat> if I'm not ready for it, I don't want it yet because I want to be able to have it and keep it and keep it well. I don't know why <clears throat> I'm like losing my voice right now. That's weird. Um, but I don't know. I think that's a good way to look at it where it's like, you know what? If that's true, then I'll wait as long as God thinks I need to wait. So, yes. The next one. The next one's just it's a stupid one, but it's funny. Never underestimate the power of a good pajama set, even if you're the only one that's never going to, or even if you're the only one that's ever going to see it. There is something about putting on a pajama set, like a matching top and bottom or a pajama dress or like something because I grew up even till recently even sometimes I still do random shorts and an oversized baggy graphic t-shirt to bed and that's also a superior move it's very comfortable we can't deny that but there is something about putting on a pajama set a nice cute set that just makes you feel like that person makes you feel like that girl do I have matching sets for guys yeah they do that boy <laughs> whatever um yeah that one's self-explanatory but i think it's true um okay the next one says there comes a time or there will come a time for everyone where you and your friends are at completely different stages of life and that's okay it's easier said than done but really try not to compare timelines because your timeline is not their timeline and i know it's one of those cliche cheesy things that people say all the time but it's true. I was talking to one of my best friends about this last night um, where she was feeling a little emotional about things. And I, I, I messaged her like a month or two ago feeling the exact same thing of, you know, watching people have something that you want and it's just not happening for you. And you're like, what's wrong with me? And when you're in it, it's so hard to see that there's nothing wrong with you. And so I was talking to her and I could see it from the outside perspective. And I was telling her this, that I'm like, you know what? your timeline is different. We're not all, imagine if we all got married at the same time, the same day, the same way. Like that's why everyone's life is different. Um, And like I said before, I would rather wait until I'm ready to have it than get it prematurely and not be able to keep it well. So there is going to come a time where you're going to have to sit back and you're going to have to cheer your friends and your family on. And you got to find beauty in that especially the people that they're they're your people you love them so much like you should be rooting for them because when it's your time they're gonna root for you um so yeah it's hard it's easier said than done sometimes but there's also something beautiful about it too that we're all just different so the next one this one's okay this one's like not dating related at all but the next one is i know it's easier to just text somebody happy birthday we all do that but there is something about sending a physical card in the mail to somebody that just i don't know it just hits different i personally i carry uh stamps with me all the time and because i like send in my monthly like maintenance payment to like live here so i always have to have stamps so like today I went and I grabbed a $4, like it's cheap, like to get the $4 cards at CVS. I put a little gift card in it and I mailed it to my stepbrother's wife because her birthday is two days after mine. 
And I did it also with my stepdad last month where I couldn't see him for his birthday, but I did text him for, you know, happy birthday, whatever. But I, without warning, I sent him a card in the mail. And when they don't know that it's coming and they get it and it's like a surprise and they can put it up in their house. Like my mom called me and she was like, did you send him a card? She was like, he was so happy. Like it made him so happy. So that's what I've been doing lately. I like, I've just been sending people cards. I don't know. And I just think it makes them so happy. So I like having, like I have birthday cards up on my shelves right now too. I just, I just love them. I don't know. The next one, self-explanatory, just because he's older does not mean he's more mature. Um, I have dated 30, 31, 32 year olds. I don't know if I'd go older than like 33. I'm usually like a five year gap limit personally. But um, man, I can tell you how many men I've encountered in their 30s in the last couple years that are still figuring out their dating goals. I'm like, what do you mean? What are you, what are we trying to figure out? I don't understand. So that one's self-explanatory, but that one, that one makes me kind of scratch my head a little bit. Okay, just a few more left. The next one says, this is, this is a big one. This is something I learned last year and it was a tough pill to swallow. Um, but the next one is, sometimes you're gonna have to accept the fact that some people will never find out the full story and you're gonna have to be okay with that. It just is what it is. Sometimes that happens. And that goes back to the, you know, silence is the best revenge kind of thing. Sometimes you're going to be, you're going to have to go through a situation and people might think something about you and you may not be able to clear your name. You might just have to let it happen and that's okay. It sucks at first, but at the end of the day, the people that know you know you, the people who respect you will respect you and if they are truly your people they will know that any lie spoken about you is not true and if they really are concerned about it they'll come and they'll talk to you about it but at the end of the day the only person's opinion that matters is God's and he knows every ounce of every truth so at a certain point especially if it's someone that's not in your life anymore or people that are not in your life anymore you just kind of have to learn how to let it go it's so much more peaceful that way. Sometimes you're going to have to be content with that. The next one, it's like an awkward way that I worded it. But basically, I grew up kind of self-conscious of like, when I smiled really big, I didn't like the way it looked. Or like sometimes my laugh can be really loud and I don't like it. And so I'll like purposely try to make my smile smaller or do like a fake laugh that isn't as loud and I am learning that I don't want to do that anymore like I just have to be me and the people that love you will love you for you and God designed you for a reason you are the clay he is the he is the artist or the clay maker whatever the phrase is he made everything about you on purpose nothing was by accident he made you the way he made you for a reason and the people that love you for you which is the people that you want in your life they're not going to care. So I'm starting to learn to not really care about that too much. I, I realize now that I grew up really, really valuing the opinion that others had of me, like too much. And now I'm trying to unlearn those things. <laughs> Three more. It is important to, to pray not just when things are bad, but when things are good too. And I spoke about this in my last episode where... I said, you know, it's so easy to call on God and pray for help when you're really going through it. Like when you're down bad, when you're in your bag, you're when you're emotional, when you're just going through something horrible. It's so easy to be like, God, I need you. But when things are going well, sometimes we forget about him. And that's not good. So it is just as important to pray when things are good and to worship God when things are good and not just when they're bad. He's not a genie that you just go to and ask him for things when you need them. He is your father. He is, you know, whether you know it or not, he loves you. And he's always there in the good and the bad. So you got to worship him in the hills and the valleys, if you are familiar with that scripture. Um, this next one I swear by. 
a non-negotiable after a breakup. All pictures and memories have to go. I'm talking Snapchat memories. I am talking physical pictures, your camera roll and your phone. I mean all of it. One of the best things I ever did, and I don't know where this strength came from to this day. It must have came from God and also my mom was here and she probably encouraged me. I don't know what came over me, but that night, the night of my breakup, my mom was here. We went through this whole entire apartment and anything that reminded me of that relationship or that was from that relationship went in the trash. The memory box that I had from that relationship, my mom took home and burned, <laughs> which sounds dramatic, but my, my stepdad has a big fire pit and he just likes to burn things. And so I just said, have at it. And she took it and they burned it. Um, and the next morning I sat here literally in this exact spot for like an hour and a half. I went through my entire Snapchat memory all the way back to like 2014. No, it was like 2012 when I got Snapchat. Any picture that had my ex or something that we did in it, gone. That way, as I went through the next year, my Snapchat memories didn't come up. I never saw the pictures again. I went through my entire camera roll, all pictures gone. And I truly believe that was one of the best things I could have done for myself. That night, all pictures on social media were gone. I mean, gone. And it allow, it doesn't allow you to go back and look and feel even more sad about it. It was one of the best things, best things I did, guys. It, it helps you heal so much faster. I promise you. It's going to suck. You may cry while you do it, but... Thank me later. And last but certainly not least is to just show up for yourself and never s vow to never stop bettering yourself and investing into yourself. Investing time, sometimes investing money if you can, you know, and by that I mean like last year I really like set out to better myself. Like things that I didn't like about myself, I changed some of that being therapy some of that being I got braces some of that being I dyed my hair back to my normal hair color because that's what I felt more confident in or just like you know like just vow to never stop investing in yourself in your passions for me my passion is content creation and social media um and you guys and so I invest a lot of time into that because it's what I love find what you're passionate about and just invest in yourself never stop bettering yourself and I really feel like when you invest into those things that you love so much and that make you you like we said like that'll attract the right people into your life the people that you're going to want the people that will walk alongside you the the people that will you know um share your passions or support you in those passions who will walk alongside you while you while you do those passions you know um it's just so important to really be like your number one cheerleader and advocate. And it's easier said than done sometimes, but I think it's really worth it. So anyway, I feel like I have talked a lot, but that was my list of 28 things. Let me know which ones resonated with you. Let me know what you agree with. Let me know what you don't agree with. I love reading your comments. If you want to give me a birthday present, if you want to like this video, Liking this video helps YouTube see that people are liking my content and will push it forward into the algorithm so that more people can see it. That would be the best birthday gift ever. But thank you guys so much for being here. I really do love all of you. Thank you for making my birthday so special. As always, I appreciate you and I will see you right back here next time for episode 26. Bye guys.